throughout centuries and generations, the local church stands as God's idea for the spiritual growth of every believer. And so, here at Celebration Church, we are on a mission to partner with you for your progress and joy in the faith. Even as we obey the Great Commission to preach the gospel to every creature and raise disciples of every nation, our purpose is to know Christ and to make him known to a billion souls in 10,000 cities. At Celebration Church, we envision men, women, and even children of every tribe bless life in Christ Jesus. This is who we are. In Christ, for Christ, with joy. Hello, good morning, and welcome to service. We are so thrilled to have you join us today for another uplifting time in fellowship with the Lord and other believers. Well, service starts in a few minutes, so here are a few things that you need to do to get yourself ready. First of all, jump right out of bed and ditch the covers. You might be watching online, however, if this is still a service and you're still in church. Secondly, make the most of this time by getting yourself into a more suitable position. Especially one that doesn't encourage you falling asleep or other distractions. Next, please ensure to get your pen, your notepad, and your Bible ready so that you can make copious notes as you watch the sermon and also read the scriptures as they come. Also, do ensure to participate, pray along, worship along, and give. Do as if you're physically present in the church building. Finally, if you know someone that should be here right at this moment, why not invite them by sharing them and links to this live stream? as I'm sure they're going to be as blessed as you most certainly will be. Once again, on behalf of our lead pastor, I welcome you to church today. Do have a swell time in service. God bless you. excited to be in church this morning if you are stand to your feet and give the lord a big shout come on you can do better than that give god a big shout glory to god turn to your right and to your left look to your neighbor and say welcome to church hallelujah are we ready to pray awesome so please turn your bibles with me to the book of acts Acts chapter 20, verse 32. Amen. And it says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Praise God. You see, this scripture here reminds us of how powerful and how efficacious God's word is. The Apostle Paul here says God's word is able to, to build you up. Hallelujah. You know what that means? If you came to church feeling depressed, feeling down, God's word is able to fix you. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? So we are going to be praying and we would say in this service, the word of God that is taught builds me up. I am rooted and grounded in the faith. Christ is fully formed in me. If you believe those words, go ahead and turn them into prayers right now. 
and past Yes, we are transformed by the word. As we listen, we are rejuvenated. This is not a time to look around. This is a time to pray. Our lives will never remain the same again. Ah, the word is building us up. If there's been any area of our life that has been difficult, we declare that in today's service, the word of God makes it easy. In the name of the Lord Jesus, come on, come on, come on, pray. You are not living here the same way you came. You are living here different. You are living here better. In the name of the Lord Jesus, oh, go ahead and pray. There is no stopping you in today's service. Hey, glory to God. We are coming out of every difficult situation as a result of the use of God's word. Thank you, Jesus. It doesn't matter how long you've been in that situation. God's word is able to fix you. Pray like you mean it. Pray fervently. Parosuria na katali katahai. Reto zelemete zishtaka. Eluvi la patali katabaya. Alo zikianaja. Oh, my life is taking on a new leaf. Reto zam ratiz. Bello zukiana. Levi la pataki zikita lepeto zokoto. Zefeli brat ila zande kozi kiti arajda. Oh, thank you, Jesus. As a result of God's word, you are bolder, you are stronger. In the name of Jesus, Retos, Ifrat Ila Pandakata, Zephatos the Zeresha, you have just few minutes left. Radeish tikata. If you've not been praying fervently, oh pariyada hashda. Use those remaining seconds to pray, 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 pray fervently. Radeish shuvrat ila pande. Rokoto zokoto feli parada bahaya. Zekiliana haya. Oh pa, 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 paniako zifra. Ila hashta, zene mekatele peto ziana hashta, vred ishta kapahaya. Oh, we thank you, dear Lord Jesus. Kala mando zifra deishta. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Do you believe that today's service is for you? Do you believe it? Shout glory! glory. Hallelujah. Now let's take our confession. Are you ready? So say after me, I approve the will of God for my life in this service. I am fervent in prayer. I am sold out in worship. I am attentive to the word. I am prepared by prophecy to be all that God has called me to be. Shout Holy Spirit. I am ready for all you have for me. Shout and say my mind is renewed. My heart is open. My life is forever changed. Come on, jump and shout glory. Can you
rejoice some more this morning. Are you ready to give God the best of your praise this morning? Say, neighbor, excuse me, yo. Come on, let's go. All right. Can you just swing your body this morning to God? Come on. To the left. Come on. To the right. Hey. Let's go again. 
Hallelujah. And so I want us to pray this morning and I want you to say with me, say thank you, Father. Because as a church, we declare that we are supernaturally equipped to defend the integrity of the word. Say every tree, every tree, every opinion, every knowledge that our Heavenly Father has not planted. This morning, as we pray, is uprooted. Make that your prayer this morning. And pray fervently. Take I all season. Pashata. Declare that every church in the body of Christ, teaching the right doctrines, teaching the truth, are strengthened in this season. False opinions will not hold sway. No, because every tree that our Father has not planted is rooted out, pulled out, has no room to grow, has no room to flourish. If indeed you represent the integrity of the Word of God, let your prayer be fervent. Telebelekosia, ete shiso, akalabata, ebelekasoto, ebelede palata, ribondo, sakie, kelimon shada, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, and balata, but we know that they that are with us are greater, are greater. And so we stand on the word of God and say, false doctrines will not prevail in our time. False doctrines will not prevail in our time. Atelibata, atelibate, 
Ki Kosia, Bella Kose, Bella Kose, Ishada, and Topreti, and Bella Kate, Paulo Sute, and Bate, and Felicotto, and Bellate, and Bada, we see men and women rising up in faithfulness to defend the truth, to give an answer to every man who asketh the reason for the hope in them. We are integ we have integrity. We are faithful with this word, committed to our trust. We do not tire. We continue. Balata, Etesate. We sharpen our ability to be able to rightly divide the word of truth. Ebekete, Palasosia. Because we are at war. Because we are at war. Asakatete, Elish, Mentokrida, Sepeleteke, Ebelete. We will faithfully hand over this gospel to the next generation. Our children will not go through what we went through. Ebalata, Kate, Polesa, Bendekete, Shizalata, Sarobotu, Vateye, Vateye, Ambalata. Pray like you are contending for the faith. Salty, Pladiate, pray like you are playing your part. Alete, Zontiga, Zontige, Pola Suze, Pola Suze, Eshata, Beleteke, Ponda Belete, Abana. We see the word of God flourish and prevail in its truth. Nothing will douse the efficacy of the word of God. <laughs> Bakata, Pondelebete, Sokotobo, Shadaba, Arata. As we go about, the gospel stays effective. Beletete, Palata. We partner with angels, <laughs> Bente, to strengthen those doing the work faithfully. Palata Kata, Belete. Persecution may arise, but we stay strong. Persecution may arise, but the church of God stays strong. Rata, Badekia, Badekie, Rumenete, Bella Saltica, Bella Tosida, Menta Balata, Ebele Toko, Benete, Ekatabash, Eribenebenebenebene, Bola Tokoto, Benete, in Jesus, mighty name we have prayed. Along the same lines, Habakkuk 2, verse 14 says, For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters covers the sea. It is still our yet to occupy. It is still our yet to take over territories for the gospel. Are you tired? It's only April. <laughs> still more territories to be won. Still more lands for the gospel to spread with ease. And so you will say with me, we declare that CCI Global grows in influence, impact, and reach. We cover the earth with the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Make that your prayer this morning. We are strengthened to do more. We count not ourselves to have apprehended 28 campuses, but a billion souls. A billion souls in 10,000 cities. So we press on. This one thing we do, we press on, we press on. Balate, we count on ourselves to have arrived. Katebosh, Belekerega, Ebo Sokoto, until the knowledge of the word of God spreads. As the waters cover the sea, we make impact, we grow in influence, we grow in our reach. Matakie, Bella Tuzike, Potoko, Abalata, Rabata, Koshate, Palatataka, Rebelateke. You are still the envoy of God to your office. Take us, Palate. You are still the envoy of God to your family. Ribada, Telebolo Koza, Koshata, Bellate, Zakatata. Potoko, Benedegaba, all across the globe, all across CCI campuses and unreached lands. There is more to be done. And so we continue. 
We continue. Repata, Zonte Balika, Bellado Shita, Ikela Telebolo to Sia, Fete Bolta, Palato Cosata, Pete Cabellate, Cola Saka Dikebo, Bellaco Shata Dabata, Benion Tegada, Benion Tegade. In Jesus, mighty name, we have prayed. Oh, glory to God. I want you to say with me this morning, say, I declare that in this month and beyond, my eyes are open to see the revelation of Jesus. Say, I know who he is, and I know who I am because of who he is. I know who he has made me. The same spirit that was in Jesus, that created the heavens and the earth, that raised Jesus from the dead, dwells in me today. Therefore, I do the works of Jesus. And like he said, greater works than he did will I do every day. Say, I bear fruits of the Spirit. I manifest the gifts of the Spirit. As he is, so am I in this world. His attributes are my attributes. I mirror the integrity of Jesus in devotion, doctrine, and in dunamis. I mirror the integrity of Jesus. I declare, say I declare that I am full of power from the crown of my head to the tip of my toes. Anywhere I step, people see it. They discern it by the contact of my eyes, by my appearance, by the laying on of my hands, and by my words. It is communicable. It is transferable. I carry something contagious. It is the fire of the Holy Ghost. I prosper in the will of God. I walk in the will of God. I have limitless ability, limitless capacity. These hands do the impossible. These hands never lack. Men are coming from afar. They come bearing gifts. They come to favor me. People dream about me and they are commanded to favor me. Say, I declare the truth of God's word prevails through me, through my local church, to the ends of the world. Every tree that my heavenly father has not planted is rooted out. Ministries that teach the truth are raised. Disciples obedient to the faith are raised. We establish policies of righteousness. We propagate the influence of the gospel in our generation. I declare that Celebration Church is marked by signs and wonders. We are a studious church and a praying church and an evangelical church. We declare that the impact of CCI Global will shake the nooks and crannies of the world. We are 10 times better, 10 times stronger, and 10 times faster by the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout glory, 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 glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, if you know Jesus is your everything, I want you to lift your hands and just speak in other tongues this morning. Oh, Jesus, you're my everything. So I'm going to teach you a simple song, you see it. We lift our hands as we worship you, you have made us. We lift our hands as we worship you, you have made us clean. For you are our Sabbath, our King and our rest. For you are our righteousness, Yeshua. One more time. We lift our hands. Can you declare that with understanding? We lift, we lift our hands as we worship. You 
have made us yours. We lift our hearts as we honor you, Jesus. You have made us clean. For you are, for you.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Speak in tongues for a few minutes. Zita patrika pondreke pondreka paya. Zotreke peke pronson dreke ba. Rezo teke patrika paya. Eso dreke pondreki ba. Zeteke peke prote. Rezo teke toke preteke. Zuteke peke toke prete. Geso dreke peke so teke paya. Rezo dreke peke so te. Reto ko prete le ko paya. Eso prete ke pando re ke pendre, rose tre ke po, zote ke po kushete, le prete ke po te ke prande, rendo gre so tre kiva, e preto ko prete ke pelia, zote ke pele to gre sete, e pele to ko prete kive, shete ke pele te ke pe, e peke te ke pe kido, pre so tre kivo kushete, e pele to kai. In Jesus' mighty name. The word of God says, I will restore the years that the canker worm has stolen. And I want to give you the prophetic opportunity to declare that right now. I sense in my spirit, there are people, there is a disparity between where you ought to be and where you are. What you ought to be doing and what you're doing. But by the wisdom of God and the power of God, that gap is about to close. For wasted years, there is compensation. And by the speed of the Lord, that delay is no longer existent. So listen, as you pray, I want you to open your spirit prophetically because God is about to show you things. And you begin to pray, Lord, by your mercy, restoration, compensation. In the name of Jesus, begin to declare that right now. Declare that right now. Declare that right now. Declare that right now. I may be doing good, but how great ought I to be? In the name of Jesus, I step into the fullness of your plan for my life, for your calendar for my life. In the name of Jesus, I step into it. I begin to walk in step with your plan. The places, the size, the platforms, I step into them. Zeto ko prende le kapaya, iso preso terikai, ko prese terika pondre, le prete ke pelo te ira, razo te ke pele to ko prete, razo te ke pele to ko prete, eso tre ke pele to ko prete, eso te ke preto ko prende le kapai, eso tre ki do ko prete le ko shete. Zete te te te, empele to ko prete kiba. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. A text I hardly quote: "Believe in His prophet, and you shall be established." In the name of Jesus, by the rod of the prophetic, every delay in your life is cancelled. That marriage that ought to have happened years ago is happening months from now. The child you ought to have carried years ago, you are carrying months from now. The business you ought to have started years ago, you are starting months from now. Receive the capital. Receive the strength. Tears are turning to joy. And I see the angels of the Lord moving on account of these prophetic words and bringing the counsel of the Lord to fruition. You are coming back with your evidence. You are coming back with your evidence. You are coming back with your answers. Let the miracles begin now. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. Come on, say loud, amen. It's good to see you all. God bless you. How are you all doing? Please be seated. Someone said I wasn't in church last week because I released the song and therefore I had to do talk. I said, talk. So. <laughs> oh 
my God. How are you all doing? SLK, how are you doing? Pastor Nelson, how are you doing? God bless you all. Praise the Lord. If you invited your friends to church today, you invited them the right day because I'm about to preach a sermon that will make them wonder, what am I doing here? I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm preaching on circumcision. (laughs) Oh, you think I'm joking. But I think that it is something powerful that if understood in the salvific context, would be a blessing to you. I want to start by reading Romans chapter 8 from verse 18 to 20. Romans chapter 8 from verse 18 to 20. Please open your Bibles. Give me a few seconds as we welcome people who are worshiping with us online. One, two, go. Can you put your hands together for them? Well, thank you for tuning in and worshiping with Celebration Church. We believe that there's no distance in the realm of the Spirit. And so the Word of God, quick and powerful, is about to bless your life. And everything happening here is about to be replicated in your home. We do encourage you, if you, if you have a Bible-believing church around you, don't make the online church experience, you know, your only source of spiritual growth. Get in, get involved, and have community around you. And hopefully there's a CCI church around you. Otherwise, just find another Bible-believing church. But for now, get ready to be blessed because God has something to say. Pick out your pen, your notepads, and be blessed. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. All right, are you in Romans chapter 8 from verse 18? I'm going to read verse 18. You will read verse 19. Then we all read verse 20 together. Are we ready? Come on, are you in church today? For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Verse 19, you go. For the endless expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Let's all read verse 20 in unison. One, two, go. For the creation was subject to futility, not willingly, but because of he that subjected it in hope. Now, I want to ask you a seemingly unrelated question. Did you ever have a a friend? Did you ever have a friend who was rich, but for a long time you didn't know? Maybe a few of you can relate. You might have been friends for years, then something happened. You're not like, so guy, you the ball like this. I know. You know, there was a guy in, a, in my secondary school. Regular Joe used to flew around like everyone. The only clue with which you could suspect there's something going on here is, you know, when all of us are saving our small allowance, you know, maybe to buy, some of you may not relate. There was a time Coca-Cola was 10 naira. They had this small bottle, 10 naira, I will buy snacks. See the way some Gen Z's are looking lost. You know, but he could afford to buy, he could afford to eat twice, visit the talk shops twice. I mean, well, you're trying, but we never thought much of it. Then something happened. His parents will always send the driver to pick him. But one day, the driver came and he was not around. What had happened? He had gone home with his friends. But he didn't tell anybody. That was when there was a problem. We didn't know that he belonged to a very influential family. His father was a high-ranking person in the police force. And his father had had threats against his life and family. And so imagine the shock hearing... We went to your son's school, we didn't find him. Before we knew it, there were policemen everywhere searching the school, asking the teachers, where is he, where is he? And the fathers told the policemen, if you don't find him, don't come back home. I've never seen the principal humble like that before. We said, we will find him now. We said, eh, Mr. Adebayo, eh? He comports. He's just searching everywhere, you know? You know, and all of that. So the next day, we began to look at him different. So, all oh, this way, they follow us, they hustle. <laughs> there are different giveaways. For some of them, they will dress in the most modest, is their wristwatch that will catch them. 
Some of you know what I'm saying. Just some little things you will used to know because I can tell you one thing for sure. A lot of them like to disguise. You know, there's this relative I, I had is with Jesus now. And I like to talk about because, I mean, for a long time, he drives around uh, Corolla. Then we went to his house. That's the first time, the only time till date, that I visited someone's residence. And there are lifts. There is a lift in his house. Yes. So his, his house was four stories. So he used lifts to come down to greet us. You know? <laughs> I just... It's hard to impress me, but I was impressed. You know? But what if I told you that this is the case with you as a child of God? Look at that text again. It says, for I reckon. This is the mentality of someone who understands spiritual realities. I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. So it means we've got a lot of glory that is not apparent. They don't know us. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like that rich kid that is disguising. You go around and they don't know your true identity. Are you listening to this? See, the word of God is renewing your mind. Because in your carnality, you only reckon wealth in natural things. But he's letting you know the riches you have in Christ are so grandiose. He's telling you whatever you're suffering in this present time, they're not worthy to be compared. There is going to be due compensation. Say loud, amen. amen. And then look at what he says in the next verse, verse 19. He says, for the end expe expectation of the creature, wait for the manifestation of the sons of God. Oh my God. It means you have so much glory, even God's creation cannot wait to see it. Are you listening to me? Oh my God, you are so carnal. If I say be blessed now, you will respond well. I say you have so much glory in Christ, God's creation cannot wait to see it. Yeah, that's how to respond. They are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Waiting. You see, just like Jesus, he wanted to let the disciples, at least some of them, have a glimpse of his real identity. He took them onto a mountain and he glowed up before them, giving them a prophetic picture of his glorified state. And the same people, they, they, in fact, you know, I can just imagine what it might have been. Because all the while, maybe they didn't see him properly. And God likes to do this thing. He likes to hide the glory of his children. You know, I watched a social experiment. You're not going to like me saying this, but it's true. In the social experiment, they gathered ladies in a cinema. And they just put the image of some guys and they asked them to rate them over 10. And then all of them were rated. Then after a while, they called the same ladies, put up guys, their images on the screen. But this time around, their income was put under... under their face. And then interestingly, some of the average looking guys who were heavy earners were ranked higher in handsomeness. I, I really like his nose. If I slap you. <laughs> because there is something about glory sometimes. When hidden, people don't really understand and appreciate your real value. And God likes to do that a lot. There's another text that talks about this. Look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7. Before we move there, look at verse 20. I don't think we read verse 20 of Romans 8. It says, For the creation itself was subject to futility, not willingly, but because of him that subjected it in hope. The creation itself was subject to vanity, KJV says. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. They don't really see us. They don't really know our rank. Are you listening to this? Do you know how special the man in Christ is? That everything that is done to you, God takes it personal. That on the last day, he will tell some people, I was naked and you didn't give me clothes. 
I was thirsty and you didn't give me water. And they will say, when? How? When were you naked? We didn't give you clothes. And he says, as long as you did this to the least of this, you have done it to me. That's how special you are. You may never have considered yourself special, but God takes personal everything done to you. Are you listening to this? Made subject to vanity. Made subject in hope. He's giving you something to hope for. Giving you something. And I hope that you are not so blinded by carnality that your only hope is not that in a few months you will have a better car, a better house. For everyone who is truly saved, this should give you more joy. The next expectation of the creation is waiting. Come on, are you waiting? For the manifestations of the sons of God. That one day, at the trump of God, we will be changed. Come on, are you with me? Tambra sotrika paleton grisas. Caught up in the clouds. And so shall we ever be with him. In a new glorified state. We may not be able to grasp how glorious it is, but we believe the word of God. And if he says it is something to be desired, it is something to, de be, to be desired. We learn from God's word, okay, we should earnestly wait for the manifestation where we wait. Amen, somebody. And we're crying Maranatha. Someone say Maranatha. Maranatha. Which means come quickly. We can't wait. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 7. He says that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Meaning, God wants to use you to show how rich he is. You know what that means? You know, there are some men who like to show off their wealth in their children and in their spouses. They, they will be modest, but when you see their offspring, I'm using offspring too. <laughs> Growing up, I always fantasized about it. Don't worry, oh, that's before I even knew there was a call on my life. Just imagine, now I'm painting a picture for you. Just imagine your, your children come home with their friends. And they enter your house and they're like, bro, your dad is rich. Woo! Say amen. Yeah. And you're like, oh. the cars, oh. the house, oh. you know? And you just know that it's going to be the talk of the school for the next two weeks. And you just come, come out and say, hey, children, how are you doing? Make sure you don't hurt yourself. You know what I'm Do you, are you thirsty? Do you need, okay, take this. Take this one. The Riazo, some of you... <laughs> <laughs> it's like some of you don't believe you will ever be that prosperous. I just say, hey. if you believe, show excitement now. You they doubt God. <laughs> it doesn't cost money to dream, oh. it doesn't cost anything. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, I was somewhere with my kids and a lot of kids. Now, this humbled me. Please don't take this the wrong way, but I, maybe I shouldn't tell you. Never mind. <laughs> okay, so I was, I was somewhere with my kids and a lot of kids. And something happened. I spoke to one of my daughters, and she said, okay, dad. And one of the girls said, that's your daddy. She said, yes. She said, oh, you're so lucky, you know. I said, Olu Aishé. Olu Aishé. We did try. We are getting there. Amen. That's how your children, they, they, in fact, their friends will say, do you know who his daddy is? Do you know who his mom is? Amen. Say loud, amen. amen. <laughs> now, you know what's even more glorious? God wants to do that with you. No wonder the angels are saying, what is man that you are mindful of? What is man? What is all this? What is man? You know, I was, see, one of the most touching moments ever 
happened when I was casting out the de devil. I think it was 2010, 2011. The young boy was on the floor, unconscious for 40 minutes, but another voice was talking through him. And then at some point, he just couldn't understand. After bragging, he said, I'm not a normal demon, I'm a fallen angel, but he was on the floor, helpless. I think you were there. Floor helpless. And then, in a moment of agony, I could feel the agony. He looked up and he cried, Why do you love them so much? You know, you, you could tell that if it was by strength, see this small boy that graduates, glory has pinned me to the floor, I can't move. What kind of thing is this? He, he couldn't just understand. Why do you? Then he went on to begin to, you see, when you, <laughs> I have met many ancients in deliverance. This one, Abros, you understand? He said, I was the spirit in the captain of the 50 that confronted Elijah. <laughs> I said, bro, you're old, you know? You're old, though. <laughs> so I'm trying to calculate his age, if this is <laughs> you know? And you could tell the jealousy. He said, even we don't know what you have, if we don't know what you have, I don't know why he loves you. And he will just be doing anyhow. Then he said, we're just waiting for you people to go. And after the rapture, when you people go, the people who are left behind, he said, we will eat their flesh. We will tear them. Hey. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us. I know you fast, but the glory will exceed your fasting. Yes. Listen, we are talking about grace. The exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness. When you see us so lavish in the glory of God, come in, come on, are you with me? Judging angels. Reigning in life with the Christ. Ah, what is man? That you are mindful of him. Even we too will join to ask, why do you love us so much? But for now, we carry these treasures in earthen vessels. In case no one has told you ever before in your life, I am telling you, you are very special. Very special to God. And let me tell you something, if you are special to God and others don't reckon you special, their opinion doesn't count. Are you listening to me? I'm trying to infuse in you what is called God esteem. If God be for us, who can be against us? It doesn't really matter who doesn't think you are beautiful, who doesn't think you are worth it. If God says you are special, you are special. If they treat you any different, well, life must be difficult for the blind. Oh, you know, I'm explaining where my God esteem came from. I'm telling you honestly. The realization, God loves me. And he wants to show off his glory in my life. He cannot wait to show it off. That one of the ways God wants to display his glory is with his children. See my children. See my, and then maybe he'll call your name. Oh yeah, you know, Kingsley, walk, let them see. <laughs> I wonder what song they will sing. Maybe a song, maybe, let me see. Which song by Dom Wen? There's one, uh, blah, 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 you know, anyway, never forget. <laughs> Don't mind me. Oh. But like I said, when you have a lot of wealthy people and their wealth is hidden, there's a way to know. So for instance, that rich relative, there's the day he came to our church, see me see while I and then after, you know, the service, besides all his feedback on the sermon that was so powerful and everything, he now had feedback on my dressing. He said, I like everything you're wearing except your wristwatch. I said, which kind of shade be this? So there was this wristwatch that Pastor K bought for me. Apparently, it was fake. I should have known. That's the only time someone has abused my wristwatch in my life. 
was Pastor Ked about it. I just want you to know. <laughs> you know, the restaurant was so bad, he had to send someone to the house to bring a new one for me. Do you understand? You know, so because of that, I started paying attention to his timepieces. Ah, hmm. You know? So there are usual ways to know. And the same way, throughout the Bible, even if God has prepared this glory for a future time, there are ways to know. There are ways to know. And that's what circumcision was in the Old Testament. Are you getting it? Just the same way you just see someone flash a wristwatch and you'll be like, ah, your cover is blown. <laughs> Sorry, is that Patek Philip? And he's trying to, uh, you know, you don't cast. <laughs> Come on, are you with me? And even if this symbol was hidden, it was God's coded way of showing people, these are my children. And I'm telling you, that identification is powerful. Are you listening to me? And I want to explain what it is. First and foremost, circumcision is um, a compound word from two words. Scission means to cut with the scissors. And circum means around, all right? First and foremost, this is different from the biological circumcision that is done to male children. This is not as gory. Um, some Hebrew scholars will tell you that that one, biblical circumcision, they just use a small, I mean, a blade to cause a small slit, just something symbolic. Have you ever witnessed the circumcision of a child? <laughs> I have no words <laughs> to explain the horror. Have you? Hey, God. <laughs> P.L. put earplugs, was increased music to the highest, and went outside. But I had to be there. And with each shout, I was getting closer. I wanted to beat somebody. <laughs> you can't understand. The only thing that didn't make me beat anybody, I just let them finish. This same boy that I'm trying to protect, if I stop them from doing this thing, and he goes to school with that thing the way it is, <laughs> you trust primary school people, how wicked they can be. No children can have demons too. Just imagine it's time to go and ease yourself. You just, everybody is, shh, shh. You just, hey. They will come up with one horrible nickname. Then it's me. He won't forgive me. Oh. So it was painful, but I said, Tehran, no. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm sorry. <laughs> prepare oh, every child. You see, let me tell you, they didn't prepare me. I'm preparing you. When your son comes, <laughs> just prepare for the circumcision. Fast, prepare your mind. Speak words of affirmation. Do you know I've done counseling for a couple on top circumcision? Do you, the wife says she, she's not doing for this one. <laughs> that she can't stand it. The husband says, let us do. I have to counsel them. And what I'm, <laughs> what I'm telling you is what I told her. I said, this same boy will not forgive you. When they give him one horrible nickname. Because that's happened to me before. Don't worry. Some children came to my house. And one wanted to ease himself. I think I was eight at the time. So I took him. As I removed like this. Eh? <laughs> I said, wait for this. I had, I had not seen something. <laughs> anyway, don't worry. <laughs> so... So when they want to do my son own and I was angry, I remembered. <laughs> you know, God has shown me in the past what to avoid. <laughs> a 
Anyway, I said all of that to say this. Biblical circumcision was different, okay? It was just a slit, you know. And it represented three things. It represented three things. How many things did I say it represented? Number one, it represented identification. It was one of the ways that God wanted to identify his children. Please, can you say identification? Look at Genesis chapter 17 from verse 9. Hmm. Hmm. Genesis chapter 17 for verse 9. And God said to Abraham, As for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you, throughout their generations. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your descendants after you. Every male child among you shall be circumcised, and you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. All right? So everybody say identification. So he says it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. You know, um, so many interesting scientific facts about that. Why did God say it should be done in eight days? It has been proven scientifically that there are some necessary vitamins that became more pronounced in the child on the eighth day in such a way that if it was done earlier, they might have bled out. So many interesting... You, you see, God is so deliberate and so wise. Amen, somebody. And the Bible says in verse 14 of that same verse, it says, And the uncircumcised male children, who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, that person shall be cut off from the people. So this was a mark of identification. Anyone who was not circumcised had no place in the Jewish camp. The second thing it represented was promise. Can you say promise? Because God promised that the seed of the woman, meaning the child of the woman, will bruise the head of the serpent. And so it became prophetically symbolic that if the Messiah was going to come by procreation. There will be a reminder. Come on, are you with me? There will be a reminder. And that's what it also represented. Promise. And the one that a lot of people don't know about. And now, this is the part that concerns you. Pay attention. Both the prophetic imagery in salvation and even in your er everyday life. The third one that it represented was protection. Can you say protection? So you see, circumcision and Passover were similar in this light. Number one, all men have sinned. They are not deserving of life. They are not deserving of longevity. And so it is only faith in God, relationship with God, that gives you that exemption. I don't know if I'm going to have time this month to talk about the Passover. But listen to this. One thing you know about the Passover was this. That it was not because the Jews were righteous that they were saved. The, the angel of death was going to pass over the land. And he's not going to stop at any house because of your accents. It wasn't a racial thing at all. The only thing the angel of death could recognize and therefore spare the family was blood. Come on, are you with me? Now, this is a perfect imagery of salvation. How that what justifies us is the blood of Christ. Not our works, not our righteousness. Listen, why did, were the Egyptians judged that day? Because they didn't know. They didn't know the good news. If they had known the good news that there is safety from the angel of death, they too they would have got a lamb, slaughtered the lamb, and put the blood on their lintel. And the, see, the only thing the angel recognized was not Egyptian or Jews. The only thing the angel could recognize was the blood. And that's what we preach today in the gospel. That there is no salvation in any other name but the name of Jesus. Do you understand what I'm saying? The only way to be saved is to place faith in the blood. So that was a prophetic metaphor of Christ and his blood. His salvific work. So follow closely now. As a sign. You know, there's a text a lot of us read. And we're wondering what kind of bipolar God is this. No, you, you just didn't understand. 
God gave a simple instruction that every Jew should be circumcised. And for some reason, Moses wasn't. And so, the Bible tells us of, of a time that it seemed like God was going to come and kill Moses, right? And what did Zipporah do? She quickly, she knew. Maybe they might have had a conversation about it. Maybe, maybe it was, Moses was like saying, well, why go to slit myself? Or, you know, something like that. And she quickly took a sharp stone and cut the foreskin, all right? And cast it at Moses' feet and said, surely you are a bloody husband to me, all right? And therein lied the safety. So it just tells you that it wasn't about favoritism that the Jews were safe. Are you getting what I'm saying? That if it is by works, we are all condemned, we are all judged. Our only safety is the message of the mercy of God in his Christ. Amen, somebody. And that was another thing that the circumcision represented, protection. And that protection was by grace. So much to say, but I want to move on. Hmm. How are we to see this in the New Testament? What has changed? Now in the New Testament, Paul and the other apostles begin to intimate of a different kind of circumcision. A circumcision made without hands. They pointed out that the circumcision in the Old Testament was a prophetic metaphor of the real circumcision. You know why this is important? Because now in Christ, you need to understand that you have an identification. Come on, are you with me? And that you have received the promise. And that you have protection. Listen, it's a powerful conviction to have. Listen, say with me, say I'm marked. See, even Cain, in his disobedience, because God marked him, he knew he, nobody would touch him. Because God told him, I will put a mark on you and nobody will touch you. What if I told you there is such a thing as a spiritual mark in the realm of the spirit? Even if the people who are looking at you with your, their natural biological eyes, they can't see anything different. In the realm of the spirit, there is a mark on you. Come on, are you with me? What if the church walked in the consciousness of this touch not mark? What I'm saying will save your life. Walking in the consciousness of your divine difference. You are not ordinary. Say, I'm not ordinary. There's a divine difference to you. As I began to walk with God, something about me began to change. And it happened in the weirdest places, in the weirdest of scenarios. I would be in a lecturer's office. He's about to sign my course form. And then after a while, he drops his pen. He looks at me and he says, are you a pastor? Now, the only thing that made me a pastor was that God told me, I have put an anointing on you. You're going to preach my gospel. There was no formal ordination. Even my parents didn't know at the time. But here a lecturer is asking me. I was about to give that humble answer and say, no, I'm a child of God. The Holy Ghost said, don't, don't, don't say no. And I said, yes. He said, eh, eh, I knew it. As you came in here, something changed. Listen, it was not a prayer meeting. Come on, are you with me? This was an office. I'm telling you, there is something different about you. The more you pay attention to it, the more it grows. Are you listening to me? There was a day we were going, you know, to preach in Suruliri. That time, you should have seen us. You, there were a couple of nicknames you could have for us. Maybe like biker mice, you know, because we all love Jesus, but we're all broke. All of us. All of us. PK, you know, so. PK again. Yes. Yes. So we will pray like this. We will wear we, correct suit. All of us will dress up well, but we'll enter bikes. <laughs> Long journey, because we're always in a hurry. We'll come down like this. We always had makeup. The dust to form foundation, you know, on our face. <laughs> our face was always hard, you know. 
There was this particular day we had prayed, fired prayer in my house. Then we entered the bike and we went. I think I've told this story before. As the bike stopped, out, stopped us at Mushin, one guy crossed the road. He's a bike guy. He must have been a shady guy. He walked up to me, looking at me in the eye, funny, and said, said this in Yoruba, would you a mimimo? That's what he said. Which someone translated to mean, your eyes look like the Holy Spirit. Or something like that. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? And I'm telling you, there is something different about you. Are you listening to me? A mark of exemption. So, don't just read and see circumcision in the Bible and think, oh, well, this doesn't apply to me. It applies to you and I'm showing you how. Even if people can't see the physical difference, there is something radically different about your spirit. Come on, are you with me? I am explaining to you why no enchantment can work against you. Why if they take your name to any shrine, they can't touch you. There is a touch not mark on you. If, if, if even Cain had a touch not mark, how much more you? Please, are you listening to this? But where is that mark? This one, you don't need a razor blade for it. Glory to God. Amen, everybody. And this one is both for males and for females. Are you listening to me? And so this is what Paul describes. In Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 11. It says, therefore remember that you, once Gentiles, but he puts a caveat, Gentiles where? In the flesh. He's adding a distinction now. Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. So now he's intimating that there is another circumcision that is not by hands. Amen, somebody. Hmm. Next verse. That at that time, everybody say before, before. You were without Christ, aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in this world. Because you see, the, the circumcision marked the children of God. And if you couldn't be circumcised because you were not a Jew, or you were not a proselyte, therefore you were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenant of promise. You were called on circumcision in those days. Don't you understand? Now, when you read the story of David, Saying, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? That was you before. Uncircumcised Nigerian. That was you before. Because now you're reading and you're reading it as if you're in David's side. It is just because of Christ that you're on David's side. Are you listening to me? If it is by natural advantages and privileges, you are uncircumcised Nigerian. Then verse 13. Oh my God. If verse 13 doesn't get you excited, I don't know what will. He says, but now. Maybe I'm in the wrong branch of Celebration Church. He says, but now. He says, in Christ Jesus, you who were once afar off have been brought nigh by the blood of Christ. Say loud, amen. You were once far from God. The Jews had superiority complex. They could brag that they were the ones who had the oracles of God, who had the fathers, who had the Torah, who had the promises. But now in Christ Jesus, you who one time were far off have been brought nigh. Come on, are you with me? Now no one can boast in the flesh. But we are the circumcision who serve God by the Spirit and boast in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. Say loud, Amen. Many of you never knew that the benediction we take at the end of the service is actually from Philippians chapter 3. Our boast is in Christ Jesus. Our confidence is not in the flesh. We have been brought nigh. Now, what you read should change your perspective of devotion. Say, I'm close to God. Listen, you know sometimes you don't feel close to God, but you are. The blood of Jesus has brought me close. Oh my God, I am giving you lyrics to repeat. Say, the blood of Jesus has brought me close. 
See, let me tell you something. It is not your works that could cover that distance. You were far off. You were aliens from the covenant of promise. What has brought you close is the blood. The blood has qualified you. In Romans 4, he says, it has given you access into this grace where we now stand and rejoice in the, in the glory of God. Say, I have access. That's a very powerful metaphor there. Meaning, when I'm walking to God, I'm not walking like a stranger. I'm not walking like someone that needs introduction. You know, when you want to meet some great people, you need someone inside to say, hey, meet my friend. No, God is my daddy now. Listen, just the same way your dad might be great, but if he's in a meeting and it's urgent, you can walk in and say, sorry, sir, daddy, I need to talk to you now. Do you understand? No protocol can stop you. That's what Paul is trying to explain when he says you have access. That's what the writer of Hebrews was saying when he says, let us come boldly. Are you listening to me? Boldly before the throne of grace. To obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Say loud, amen. amen. This is important too. It is one thing to be praying for divine protection. It is another thing to have it by understanding. I'm infusing in you. This is the kind of knowledge that can save your life. It can save your life. You may need this one day. It is not when there is threat to life. You start shouting Jesus seven times. Jesus, Jesus. Yes. Build that conviction now. I have access. Come on, are you with me? And why is that important? Because he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of it's like there are people here who don't love the word of God. I said, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Brag with me, say, I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in whom I trust. Woo-hoo! Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler. From the noise of pestilence, he shall cover me, and under his wings shall I trust. You must learn to brag in your God. Thank you, Jesus. Every enchantment against you has expired. Let me say that again. I said, every enchantment against you has expired. Yeah. I get back, you know. Yeah. I know they walk alone. Can I give you a few seconds to prophesy? Both say, I get back, you know. There are more with us than they that are with them. I know the work. I know. Say, hey, 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 Walk with God the Son. I, walk. I get back in you know. oh, oh, hey, 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 Declare it. Say, I don't walk alone. Come on, say. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is a great assurance. Greater than the one of Liverpool. You, you never walk alone. You, know, you never walk alone. <laughs> Where is Liverpool on the table? 
Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Look at Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verse 11. In whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Listen, you may not be able to remember a time in your history when someone literally and practically took a sharp object and slit you like the people in the Old Testament. But he says, in whom, in him, in Christ, you were circumcised. I, are you listening to me? I said, you have been marked. There is a mark upon you. In the spiritual realm, they know who to touch and who not to touch. Listen, I said you have been marked. In Christ, you were circumcised. With the circumcision made without hands. He says, now this is the true circumcision. By putting off the body of sins of the flesh. By the circumcision of Christ. Hey, my God. Are you listening to me? So listen, the true circumcision is exemplified in two ways. The death of Christ. That's the circumcision. That when he died for you, the body of sin was destroyed. And now in him, by his blood, all of us are marked. Come on, say loud, amen. amen. And then the taking away of the sinful heart what um, Ezekiel 36 verse 26 was de describing. So the circumcision in the Old Testament typified just the same way you cut off the foreskin. You were showing that there is a part of you, a part of you, some part of you, it was formerly an essential part of you, but it will be cut off from you. God was showing in types and shadows that the body of sin, the part that qualified you to be mauled by the devil at will, that part will be removed from you. Say loud, amen. amen. The part of you that the devil could lay claim to no longer exists. Amen. No longer exists. The body of sin has been destroyed. Are you listening to me? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Look at verse 13. Of Colossians 2. R See, follow this closely. So, if anyone should ask you, what does circumcision mean to the New Testament believer? This is your answer. And you, being dead in your trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, The uncircumcision of your flesh. So listen, uncircumcision represented the body of sin. All those sinful propensities that the blood of Christ has saved you from. And so in cutting the foreskin, you were demonstrating in the Old Testament that that part has been removed. Are you getting what I'm saying? So now, all you need to do is to receive that by faith. When Ezekiel prophesied what Christ would do by his spirit. He says, I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. So the real part that you'll be taking away is in your heart. And that's why it has to be a surgery without hands. You can't reach that part. You can't take your heart and be alive. Only the Holy Ghost can do the real circumcision. Are you getting this? And so you receive that surgery of the heart just by believing in Christ. That when he died, the body of sin was destroyed. And you being dead in, the, in trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made a life together with him. Amen, somebody? Amen. Made a life together with him, having forgiven all your trespasses. So listen, by forgiveness of sins, you are circumcised. Are you listening to me? If he has forgiven your sins, he has circumcised you. And so now, we can backdate our bragging. All the bragging that we couldn't do in the past, we can do now. So like David, we can see a giant before us and not be intimidated. The circumcision is greater than height. 
is greater than stature. It's greater than weapons. Do you understand what I'm saying? I am giving you a mentality of protection. This is the confidence of David. This guy is a giant. This guy is abnormal. He has 11, I mean, six fingers on each hand. Is it six or seven? This, this is an alien. But listen, I'm not afraid. Come on, are you with me? Because even if he's a giant, I see a man without a covenant. As long as you are a man without a covenant, you are vulnerable. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that dares defy the Lord's army? I am explaining to you why no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises in judgment against you shall be condemned. Listen, circumcision is not just some theological concept you read and say, oh, that's nice. Mm, I don't really get it, but I get You get it. This is your boast in the world. I am marked. Think about it. Because God put a mark on Cain, he could go around confidently knowing nobody can kill him. What if you knew that you are unkillable? Maybe you don't believe what I'm saying. What if you knew, come on, are you with me? That there is a mark on you. Or is it, was it for Cain alone? Hey, that God put a mark on Cain and nobody could hurt him. Despite the sins of his past, nobody by a mark, a mark by God. I'm announcing to you, you've been marked. And in the confidence, the strength of that covenant, you can stand before giants, just like David, and say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? And you can say, you come against me with a spear, and with a sword, and with a shield, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Come and are you with me? The God of the armies of Israel. Because listen, we are the spiritual Israel. Come on, are you with me? By the blood of Christ, we've been given access into the inheritance of Abraham. Blessed we believe in Abraham. We can brag the way David bragged. And we believe what David believed and we see what David saw. In your lifetime, you are bringing down giants. This is your confidence in warfare. Prayer is important, but circumcision is more important. Are you listening to me? Circumcision is more important, that you are marked. You are the child of the Most High. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall expel demons. Are you listening to me? Say with me, say, I'm marked! It means that there is a sign to follow you. There is a way you can be differentiated in the realm of the Spirit. In the natural world, there are different classist ways of differentiating people, rich and poor. In some contexts, male and female. But in the realm of the spirit, there is neither Jew nor, nor, nor Greek, neither male nor female, neither born nor free. Come on, are you with me? The only differentiation in the realm of the spirit is the marked and the unmarked. Mind you, the mark of the beast is an imitation of the mark of Christ. Are you aware? The mark of the beast is for people who have not received the mark of Christ. Why was your forehead vacant? In the Old Testament, there is something called the Shama. The law of God imprinted like a tattoo on people's foreheads and on people's arms. That's what the mark of the beast is to imitate. He's the Antichrist. The imposter spirit. He's trying to imitate Christ. And so when there is already the mark of Christ on you, no vacancy for the mark of the beast. You're not getting, you didn't get what I just said. You didn't get what I just said. You, uh, no space. No space. So circumcision identifies your security in salvation, your protection in the practical aspects of life, and just your differentiation. The Bible says, for you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Now, this is an instruction. It says that you should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into marvelous lights. Anybody called out in this place? He wants you to show it off, show it off, show it off. It means when we should look at your life, there should be the evidence of divine power, divine influence. Don't be ordinary all the time. There should be some lost effect of glory in your life. 
I'm not ordinary. I'm marked. That's why I don't fear their fear. I'm different. And if they shall drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. I don't die anyhow. I'm marked. When you make this your confession, it will begin to show in your life. People will begin to discover difference. How come this is happening to everybody? It's not happening to you. I'm marked. The Bible says a thousand shall fall by your side. Ten thousand by your right side. But it shall not come near you. Come on, are you with me? He says you shall not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day. No, of the pestilence that wasted at, at noon day. Come on, do you believe in divine protection here? Yeah. What if you knew your children are covered? Covered just because of you. What if you knew everything your hand lays on is blessed? Just what if you knew? What if you knew that you commanded the backing of heaven? The jealousy of God is upon you. God likes to show off his children. Jesus is just going to the baptism of John. Probably they expected it to be quiet. The moment Jesus enters the water, God screams from the sky. This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Listen, I know what I'm saying. God can shout about your ministry. God can shout about your music. I have seen divine publicity. God wants the world to know this one is marked. Are you listening to me? God can announce your difference. Shout it from the sky. This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. A man of God told me that for a long time he didn't understand me. He was just like, who is this? Who's, who's this young preacher? You know, and, and I've noticed a pattern in my life. God takes those things personal. See, don't, don't worry about what I'm about to say if you don't understand it. The God of Emmanuel even is petty. I'm telling you. <laughs> Remember the story I told you, Reboot Camp? It is statistically impossible that you take our venue on the island. Then of all places in the world you want to relocate to, you relocate to the U.S., of all places in Texas, Texas has two different time zones. That's how big Texas is. And then specifically in Dallas, Texas, and of all the venues, it is the exact venue you chose that we're about to move to. And the exact thing that happened in Lagos happened in Dallas. Maybe you don't understand. It is not, it's not possible mathematically. So the owners of the venue just decided we are tired of this church. We want them to leave. And so, so the man was in his office doing his work and then the Agent just took him into the office and told our pastor, so this will be your office. And the man was there. I can imagine the man's shock when he said, sorry, which church? And he said, celebration church. He would have known that this is, <laughs> we need a new name, Jehovah El Petty. <laughs> There's no other way to describe it. Jealously guarding his own. I'm telling you. Jealously guarding his own. Defending you even when you don't want defense. When God tells Abimelech, you, you are dead. You are dead. Abimelech said, I didn't know. He said, well, he must pray for you. You are already in trouble. Are you listening to me? I'm telling you the story of your life. And so in the dream of the night, 
He sees a vision. Why God shows him this, I don't know. But he sees in a vision. He's sitting with a group of ministers, and then I step into the room, but in the vision, according to him, I'm a giant. And I'm walking, and with every step, the floor is shaking. Why does God show him that? God is just telling him, <laughs> leave this man alone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is there a mark on you? You know, there are some people, when they scan them on the road, there's no protection. They can see it. Just hit you with one small handkerchief. Your health will just deteriorate and go. But not you. <laughs> Say not me. Thank you, Jesus. There's a song we used to sing. But my keyboard is Gen Z, so I don't know if he knows it. Let's try. I am a child of the most high God. And I will rise and shine like the morning star Rising above every walk of the evil one Who doesn't know it? If you know it, raise your hand. Hey! <laughs> of the most I got And I will rise and shine like the morning star Rising above every walk of the evil one I am a child, I'm now will let it shine. Even me, I don't forget. Hallelujah. Rise to your feet. <laughs> Hallelujah. This sermon is for fortification. Did you hear what I said? You know the way those guys will go? They will give them something, you know? And they will start testing it. Did you watch that silly movie where they will take stones, stones to be shooting at each other? Bah! I'm doing shit. In the realm of the spirit, you have to rehearse power. Oh. I'm teaching you your own incantations. You walk around and say, in the name of Jesus, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater. Some Christians, it's only when they are in trouble, they learn how to pray. I just told you something. You are marked. You are different. No wonder they said there is no enchantment against Jacob. No divination against Israel. You will need this one day. I want to give you a few minutes. You are going to pray all these texts, these meditations. Say it about yourself right now. You just may need it. Maybe God brought this sermon to prepare you for the coming days. Declare it over yourself. I give you a few minutes and make it count. This is not the type of confession you whisper. You ought to roar with this one. Le prete que poco se te roce te que te que toco te me encontré se te te so te 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 reto co so te que se te reto co pele te que pe te que pe em prete que pe que toco prete que se te reso te te que pele te que te roce te que pe que se te reso te que poco se te Resete que peque te que peleando con prete que pele tu pai Reto con peque te que peque te que Rote que peque tu cocoto Embere tu con prete que te 
Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. I see in a vision a parent here, your child's health began to deteriorate suddenly. Suddenly. In the name above every name, let the power of Jesus rest upon that child. Let that yoke of sickness be broken. In the name of Jesus. Zebandom presitara dive le tongres, combre sete kepelendo criso triga. The Bible says that when they went from place to place, Jacob was his sanctuary and his tabernacle. He suffered no one to do them wrong, saying, Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. I prophesy over you, there's a touch not anointing on you. Yeah. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you have nothing to fear. Yeah. Because God is with you. Yeah. His rod and staff comfort you. Yeah. I said his rod and staff comfort you. Yeah. I said his rod and staff comfort you. Yeah. I said his rod and staff comfort you. Yeah. I said, his rod and staff comfort you. Amen. I keep seeing in a vision, someone here that the Lord wants to touch, somewhere at the middle, in the name of Jesus, every wrong negative deposit of the enemy in your body is neutralized. Amen. And so the power of God flows through your body right now, Amen. from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I rebuke that affliction now. Wherever you are, receive it, 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 receive it. I'm seeing someone. You keep hearing a ringing sound in your ear. I rebuke that affliction now. And I command it to stop. I command it to stop. I command it to stop. I need to give this more time. Everybody here who receives strange demonic visitations in the night in the name of Jesus I separate you from that affliction I separate you I separate you thank you Jesus you, you feel the power of God from your head to your toes from your toes to your head from your head to your toes from your toes to your head from your head to your toes Again, I say, every power of the enemy is neutralized. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. I separate you from any curse that has been lingering in your lineage. And I prophesy that a new lineage of blessing has started from you. Your children are blessed because of you. The works of your hands are blessed. And it will begin to be said about someone here. He has a Midas touch. He has, he has a Midas touch. Hey, are you listening to me? Because God has multiplied, multiplied, greatly increased the works of your hands. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. Can I give you a few minutes, few seconds to a galio? And rejoice before the Lord. Woo! 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 Praise the Lord. All right, please be seated. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Please package your offerings. Package your offerings. Um, just to keep you updated, we are very close to getting that land. Amen, somebody? So they've sent us the documents. We are doing our due diligence so that uh, we'll not hear story next year. Hallelujah. So due diligence takes how long, Pastor Bisola? Talk, let them hear you now. Two weeks, all right. So in two weeks, we'll, we'll, we'll give her the mic to give, her, give us updates. So due diligence takes two weeks. Um, please continue to trust God with us because anytime in two weeks, by the grace of God, you're going to see a video on social media of some of your key leaders on the land dancing. It will be loud. Hallelujah. So get ready for that. So when you just hear the tune, we may not put any caption or you just know what has happened. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For everyone who has been partnering with us, thank you. You know, I don't think it's too premature to tell you. They've told us um, if we want to go for double the land we are going for, we can do that. Double. You know, whilst we thought um, we had about 30 plots, yeah, so we, 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 there's the opportunity to buy everything. Everything is about 70 plots thereabouts, right? Or more than that. 13.5 acres, right? That's massive, right? Brothers and sisters, there is no church in Lagos that is 13.5 acres. Are you listening to me? And um, God is up to something grand. Please, are you joining your faith with us? You know what? Let me, let me use your divine energy small. Can you just speak a word of prophecy that in the name of Jesus we have favor? Nothing will inhibit this plan. The land we purchased, the money will be available in abundance not just for the land, but for the building and for the extra portions of land. And very soon, we'll be on that land celebrating the goodness of God. Thank you, Father. Glory to God in Jesus' mighty name. You know what? One day after service, we'll just say, you know what? Everybody, jump on your vehicles. We're going to the land. We'll just go and praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, oh, my nice. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Um, and we are trusting God <laughs> that we'll be able to do reboot camp there. Amen. So that's, that's going to take divine speed. Hallelujah. You know, I've, I've told the CEO, she, uh, she knows what to do. It's part of her KPIs. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, if you are giving your tithe today or you did so last week, please stand to your feet. To your feet. Why do we stand up? As a mental note and spiritual acknowledgement, this is not a mere donation. This is not like a donation to Red Cross and all those other organizations as powerful as this is. This is a spiritual activity. And I want you to say with me, Lord Jesus, I honor you with a tenth of my income recognizing you as my source. Say, my job is but a vehicle. You are my source. Therefore, I put you first and I thank you that I'm, up, I'm, I'm replenished to abound even more generously. In Jesus' mighty name, say loud, amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Um, first and foremost, I want to appreciate every one of you. I want you to know I don't take your generosity for granted. We've been doing a lot at the same time and we're trusting the Lord that all that he has asked us to do we'll be able to do. Say loud, amen. 
So we announced that we are starting our Ikorodu branch. Amen, somebody? I'm glad to announce that we have found the venue. So, um, so all of you that are so excited, I heard some loud woo. Um, we hope that um, partner with us, you know, for the equipment, for the rent. Um, it's a lot and we're trusting the Lord. Amen, somebody. To do all of this at the same time, trusting God for a building, planting new churches, while still recognizing we have rent to pay here, at least for now. And you know, it's, it's going to be sweet at least by next year, by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, until then, thank you for your generosity. Please continue to give. So it's offering time. The details are on the screen. If you haven't redeemed your pledges, please do so. If like me, the Lord asks you to do more, please do so. If you want to partner for the rent payment, please do so. And then your offering. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed by the morning prayers? What day is tomorrow? 16, you are counting well. Um, the Bible says, he that endures to the end shall be saved. Uh, even if that has a slightly different context, it just tells you the importance of spiritual devotion, consistency in spiritual devotion. Get ready, God is up to something amazing. We've received so many humbling testimonies. Humbling testimonies. Jesus is wonderful. Amen. So what time tomorrow? 6 a.m. So just try. Set your alarm clock. I'm very likely more tired than you are. Do you understand? <laughs> very likely. You know, I was at Ilefe this morning. Yeah, so I had my shower there, wore my clothes, entered the car, and I came down straight to preach. <laughs> A four and a half hour journey, you know, so... And I will be there tomorrow morning, no matter what. So we move. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Huh. Can we praise the Lord? Are you excited to give to the Lord? I want us to do it with thanksgiving. Sorry, let me give my offering. All right, please stand to your feet. Lord, we thank you for the privilege to give. We do this cheerfully and generously, knowing that we are replenished. We partner with our local church for your word to spread through this ministry to the nooks and crannies of this city and beyond for new disciples to be raised, new converts to be brought to the fold. And in the name of Jesus, we thank you because those fruits will abide in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for every other ministry faithfully teaching the word of God that you replenish them and multiply them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen and amen. Welcome to the choir. Celebration Church, give the Lord a shout. All my life I've been carried by grace. Don't ask me how, but I can explain. It's not a shot of miracles I'm ye. I've got some blessings that I don't deserve. I've got some scars, but that's how you learn. It's not a shot of miracles I'm ye. Yeah. I think he over and he doesn't add up. I know we come from Bible. Let me hear you say. I've got miracles and miracles A million little miracles oh, no, 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 no. I've got miracles Yeah! Count your miracles One, two, three, four I've got miracles and miracles Oh, 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 oh,
moment to tell our apostle a big thank you for blessing us with the word this morning. What do we say to him? Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for the pro for, thank you for our progress and joy in the faith because of the sacrifices you make. We love you so much, sir. You may be seated. Glory to God. All right, a couple of announcements, real quick. Midweek services continue at CCI Ikeja by 6 p.m. on Thursday at the Carries Event Center. Who's going to be there this Thursday? Amazing. And we also have bad days of the week. It was the bad days of some really special people, and we wouldn't like to bring the service to an end without recognizing them. It was Sir Emeka's birthday. As much as Sir Emeka likes to be at the background, we just want to thank you for all you do for us, sir. Do you mind standing up? Thank you for all you do for us. He's the global head of the protocol team, and we just want to acknowledge all you do. Happy birthday, and welcome to your best year yet. All right, and we also had Ini, Shagun, Mercy, Justin, Raphael, Frank, Laide, Jama, Bewaji, Abisola, Ife Olua, Ifai, EJ of EJ Works, Kalawale, Enchedo, Eddie, Oi, and Samuel. What do we say to them? Happy birthday to you all. Your church family loves you. If you have any of them around you, please give them a kind smile, a handshake, a warm, uh, a warm hug, and some cash. Glory to God. And we also have two anniversaries, the Jagadas and the Amoses. Please put your hands together for them. Happy wedding anniversary. We love you so much. The love in your home will continue to exemplify the love between Christ and the church in Jesus' name. Glory to God. We are not going to bring the service to a close without recognizing those who are doing church with us for the first time. So if it is your first time at CCI Ikeja on a Sunday morning, please be on your feet. We want to love you this morning. Welcome to church. Please welcome them the CCI way. that beautiful song just for you, especially for you, to welcome you and hope that we keep seeing you. This is not going to be your last time here in Jesus' name. We also particularly want to welcome you on behalf of our lead pastor, Apostle Emmanuel Iren, who you just listened to. We hope to see you in subsequent Sundays. Please pick your bags and your personal effects. We have people on the aisles beautiful women and handsome gentlemen who would like to share a thing or two with you at the overflow just outside the church. They'll give you directions and please, it's just going to be about five minutes. We crave your indulgence to go along with them. Thank you so much. And if it is your second time in church today, please can you wave your hands? Wave your hands. Don't be shy. Thank you for coming back again. We like to say we were so good you came twice. We hope you make it thrice. And together we will? Together we will rise. So it was your second time. It was your second time. We want to see you right after the service. Please come to this end of the hall by my left. We have a pastor and a leader who would like to tell you more about CCI as a church. Please ensure you do that right after the service. All right. We're bringing the service to a close. I'd like you all to be on your feet. If indeed you are marked and exempted, you have the next couple of seconds to make some declarations. What kind of week are you going to have? Say concerning yourself, I walk in favor. Say everywhere I go, I am exempted. The mark of Christ is on me. I have received forgiveness in Christ and so I am marked. The circumcision that is without hands has happened in my heart. I carry this as a reminder. I boast in this knowledge. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now you're going to be taking the benediction with a different understanding. 
if you are hearing this sermon for the first time. So are you ready? Are you ready? I'm going to give you five seconds. Bring out your phones if you'd like to. All right, we do this together. One, two, go. We serve God by His Spirit. We both in Christ Jesus. We put no confidence in the flesh. We experience progress and joy in the faith. Reaching a billion souls in 10,000 cities. Because we are celebration, John.